going. All right, wait, 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 wait. we're gonna do some testing on this value shopper Amigo. We always want to start off with the plug-in, test the plug. And it gives you the readings up here, it tells you whatever lights up and it gives you the what it is. And this one says it's correct. The middle and the right. Again, the middle and the right. So the plug-in's good. And then another thing with these value shoppers. Amigo started pushing out these plugs where the plug lights up. Don't get confused or, or uh, think that just because this lights up, the cord is good. All this lighting up does is doing the same thing that this does. It's telling you that that plug is good. So it lights up and it lights up. It's telling you this socket's good. So the stores are going to tell you straight off cart will not charge or will not hold a will not run for long usually 85 90 percent of the time everything with a value shopper or a mark cart or an easy shopper it's always the same thing the battery the cord or the charger or the store is plugging the cart in but not aware that possibly the cord came unplugged just a little bit or maybe came unplugged inside the cavity somewhere so they're plugging it in they're getting the light the plug-in's good they're thinking it's charging but it's not plugged up and the charger's not kicking on it's not kicking juice to the batteries so the first thing you want to do is pull your batteries out test your batteries obviously red to red black to black and it's always on a 10 second we're already reading green. Count 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Everything's good. Now this will get hot. Don't worry about it. That's what it's supposed to do. Now we're gonna try and reach in here and do this one without messing with it. Do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Everything's holding good. So the, the cells are good inside the battery. There's no reason to re replace the batteries. Everything's good. Now the next thing is you want to see if your charger works. And the easiest way to do that, that I've found, is put your voltmeter on 20. And you're going to get a standing test. It's going to give you a 12.54 and it's going to stay there. It's not going to rise. It's not going to do anything. It should stay in that general area. Now, if you go ahead and plug in the cart, you're gonna see that number jump up and rise and continue to rise. Three, four, five, see, and that's telling you this charger is throwing voltage to the battery. It's telling you the charger's good. There's nothing wrong with that charger. So these value shoppers come with this, if I'm not mistaken, is a VS4. It's a Generation 4 value shopper. It has a light up deal over here that will give you a 1 through 8 number. And uh, there's uh, codes, new codes. The original used to be flash codes. These generation fours will give you a flash code and a number code. But the generation threes will just give you a flash code. And that original flash code. Let me 
see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't have it on a... Those are all marked carts and easy choppers. Well, we're going to pull a motor wire. Turn this on just to give you an example. Automatically it gives you a four. One, two, pause, one, two, three, and two. So it's a two, two code. So it's gonna do flash, flash, short pause, flash, flash, long pause. That's your code. A two, two flash is the same thing as a four. It's just a matter of which diagnostic code troubleshooting guide you have. It's going to tell you the same thing and then direct you where you need to go. It's going to say this code means one, two, three, or four of these options. Something's wrong. And obviously I pulled a motor wire, so that has something to do with the motor. So this here, the red, is your motor. These two are your motor leads, the black and the red. That takes it all the way up to the motor drive. This green and the white is your brake leads. Those also go all the way up to the motor drive but are connected to the brake which is connected to the motor drive. Now these value shoppers do a self diagnostic every time it turns on. And if I don't know if you'll be able to hear it but as soon as I click the on button it'll click three times. And what that click means is it's sending a signal from the controller to the specific part and then back to the controller then back to the other one then and so forth and so on the three things it tests in this order every time is brake motor power and you'll hear it three times and that last one is kind of blended together but it's three clicks and that tell that told me right away that it checked the brake was fine, the motor leads were fine, and the power is fine. And it's getting everything it needs to be. And if you're still getting a flash code, then now you got to dive deeper into what's going on. So, let's say you're getting a code for the brake leads, which are these here. Which I don't know why we're not, but because that got rubbed. But... If you're getting a code on the brake leads right here, which is here and here, to make sure that it's not this wiring harness that's bad and you're getting that code because the harness is bad, you can take these leads off. Sometimes they're hard to get off. Both, take both these leads off and interchange them with the leads here because obviously it's sending a good signal for the motor so you want to make sure that your harness is fine so if you're getting a good signal and a good test but it's giving you a bad test for your brake leads you can use these two terminals to determine if this wiring harness is good or bad good signal bad signal and see, this is hooked up to the, the, uh, the brake leads are hooked up to the 18 pin on the controller. And the motor is hooked up to the controller. So if you got a good lead, bad lead, you're going to swap these two. And if it's still sending a bad signal back to the controller, then that's telling you your harness is fine. Now you need to go up to the brake and something's wrong with your brake. And hopefully that makes sense because all you're doing is, is bypassing and testing things. So vice versa, if you're getting a bad signal on this, to make sure that nothing's wrong with this wiring harness, you can swap these. And if you're still getting that bad signal, then something's wrong with your motor up front. But if you don't get a bad signal after you've changed these, then you know your wiring harness is bad. This right here, seat switch was bypassed and the seat switch was taken out. And there's always, you can, you can make yourself a little U wire with uh, connectors 
and you can pull this wire off and you can connect your little bypass up to the seat switch because if that seat switch is not engaged or sit on the cart will not move which makes it kind of hard to test the cart and so you can either do something like this and twist the wires together but of course somebody owns this cart so that's what he did but when you're out there in the field you obviously don't want to do that for safety measures and OSHA violations uh, just make yourself one of those little testers and bypass a switch onto the cord here and just let it sit there and then you can do all your random testing that you need to test um, I guess the next thing batteries are fine chargers good um, another thing you can do is you guys can order yourself some of these wires like the charger wire to the controller you can order the data cable which this data cable goes all the way up underneath and goes up to your pot assembly your enclosure up here and you can uh, order your uh, IE plug-in which goes to the plug-in over here that your charger cord plugs into and you can use those you can even get uh, order a uh, charger you can order a controller you can order a pot assembly and you can keep these parts on your truck in a box and just label that box tester parts and if you're having issues trying to test this stuff you can just obviously take the old one out put the new one in if the cart works and you know that parts bad self-explanatory a lot of us back in the day had all these parts for the value shoppers, the mark carts, the easy shoppers, and so forth and so on. It made the job a lot easier to do sometimes instead of testing all this stuff individually. So, um, I guess the next thing, we'll jump up here to the pot assembly. If you look, that data cable I showed you about, that gray cable, you've got to pinch and push up to get this little thing off. This is your data cable. They call it a COM cable, but it's no different than uh, your data cable for your computer. And it's got all those little wires in it. And this is what I'm gonna show you now. And this is where your balancing act comes in, which is, so now we've tested all this stuff and say we got issues. So now we're gonna try and make sure that none of these wires are frayed that where it goes all the way through and underneath and comes up the steering column because this thing moves all the time you never know when one of them wiring harnesses got overstressed or torn so we're going to do a little continuity test and I'm just going to test a couple wires so once again I showed you the volts for your battery and your charger and if you look right here there's a little audible signal over here in the ohms there's an audible if you can turn that over to the audible makes life a lot easier instead of trying to get a reading because again this is all a balancing act when you got to sit here and try and balance this with that when you're by yourself because you don't have anybody to hold this stuff so I'm going to show you how to do this so if you look inside there if you can see the colors of wires it looks like I got like a blue and an orange and a red and a green and yellow and a white so I'm going to Start with the white, hopefully, and then come over here and figure out where my white is. And I'm getting an audible. So that wire is fine. I'm going to jump over to the next one. And again, this does get hard sometimes. You just got to balance it. I think I slipped off. Got another audible. So you see how that number goes from that one up to a two? Every wire, even if your multimeter didn't have an audible, you should be getting a number for every wire and that number should be the same. So this one, in, in this case, every one of these wires what I say, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or it's uh, eight, eight wires in there. You should get be reading a two for.
for every single one of those wires. If you're getting anything else besides that too, and again, if you don't have the audible, then something's wrong with the data cable or the comm cable. But having that audible on there makes it easier because like I said, the balancing act gets hard sometimes. So we've pretty much gone through everything down here in the cavity. There's also um, an amp or a, 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 a fuse. I think it's like 15 or 30. This is 15 uh, for 12, 24. Uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, with two batteries, I can't think of the name of it, but it's for 12 volt batteries and and 24 in lines. Since this is running two, which equals a 24. Again, I can't think of the word for it. But when you put all this stuff back together, try to make sure none of these wires are hanging out. That's what happened with this one. It got stuck here on the outside. And if you look over here on the inside of the cavity, you'll see where it was rubbing right here. So when they went to close this, it got pinched. And I'm surprised this thing hasn't sparked out yet because the wires are severed. I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Uh, so that's everything for inside the cavity. And again, these two levers right here, if you pull them out, that's how you open it. I'm gonna connect all this back up again. It just slides up in there. We're gonna take a look at this pot assembly. I'll try and explain the best I can. Uh, so up here is your pot. This is your throttle pot. This is, um, I think they called this a hall effect. And I can't really get into the details about all that. But you guys, again, can order enclosures, pot assemblies, throttle pots, just as tester units. But this right here is another thing that goes out a lot. This up here, unless somebody has come along and caved it in and messed up that circuit board. But it's all simple plug and play. There's all your wires I was testing, at least five of the eight. This is your, your ignition. Some of these are going to have the newer versions, the Gen 3s and Gen 4s are going to have the uh, on-off rocker switch. And I think the original value shoppers are the ones that are going to have the key switches. And we they still, they still make the key switches. Um, there really is no absolute way to test the pot assembly that I was taught on when we went to the meeting. Um, there's some ohm testing and I forget where you put it, but that more or less has to do with the mark cart where left and right up and down is supposed to read so many ohms, like 3000 ohms one way, 4000 ohms another. But I don't think you can do that with this so much since it's all circuitry and a board and plug and play. So again, if you had yourself a tester to keep on your truck, it would help you out a lot. Four little screws. Sometimes they're star bits, sometimes they're Phillips. Um, that's how you get the cavity off the uh, top assembly. But it's all pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cut and dry, simple stuff. As long as you got those three little tester items, everything should be good. Um, I do want to just go ahead and just jump right into Mark Cart and show you a couple things with that. So this mark cart, the difference with this is the whole, 
this has got a huge motor in the front. If you pick this thing up, the whole thing will roll. Down here underneath here, there's a pull latch. A sticker may not be here. And I'll show you when I lift it, but if you lift underneath here, there's a little spring-loaded lever here. That's what gets the whole seat up. And then this cavity comes off. And then here's this latch I was telling you about. You'll grab onto this, and it what it does is it hooks down here on this little peg right here. You just lift it up, the whole thing comes up. So now, in certain circumstances, shit can't be diagnosed. Pardon the language. Try and find a serial number. It'll give you an XT, and that's what this is. It's an XTI. And then the serial number. And you'll call Mark Hart and give him that serial number. And they'll try and help you out and go from there. Sometimes... Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. It's just hit and miss. So the basic same thing that we went through with the Amigo. It has an inline fuse. It has a regular trip fuse. You do the same load testing, same charger testing. This is the charger. It's different style. It's for the Mark Cart. It literally says Mark Cart. The little light will come on once you plug it in. Um, the difference with this one actually is is really not too much it's kind of all the same stuff um, if you come over here to get this front off you lift this up and carefully twist this sideways and slide it off and then take this out this way bring it out now there's little, sometimes there's little screws right here that screw into these clips that hold this front cavity on pop this bottom foot tray off so what you got here is your motor you got your PWM which is your controller all the same stuff you got your wiring harness right here you got your brake leads here and you got your motor leads here or actually I got that backwards motor leads battery leads and this is your brake leads right here this is your horn, and this is goes all the way up to the pot assembly. This gray one here feeds all the way up. And this one is your motor leads, and uh, should be your brake leads. Goes right here to the motor, which is a green hub, which is all this right here. Now I'm going to show you how to test your motor. You should be able to do the same thing with the value shopper um, to see if your motor's bad. And what you're going to do is you're going to just run a direct line from your battery back here to your motor leads inside here. And I'm gonna pull that plug here in a minute. But when you do the continuity test, it's the same thing. You pull off your 18 pin or eight pin, whatever you wanna call it. Come up here to your pot assembly and you'll pull these plugs. And you'll just do the same thing. It's a little bit easier, but still a balancing act. And you're going to do your audible again. Find the, and it's a lot easier to see the wire. So there's the brown wire. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find the brown. And unfortunately, I don't see one. So we'll jump over to the yellow. So the yellow's over here on this one. And it looks like uh, the second one over and the one in the middle. So I'm going to hit that middle one. And I'm going to hit that yellow. And I'm going to get an audible. And that's how you test that wiring harness. No different than the value shopper. Just slightly, a little bit simpler. Um, this pot assembly is different. The throttle level is here. This potentiometer, again, pot assembly, that hooks right onto this bar up in this mode, and then pushing it up and down gives you your motion. This right here is your on, off, and horn. But you can also get these enclosures as well. This is uh, uh, XTI-12. This has the on off rocker um, your XTI's might have rocker switches too on a later version but the originals also have key switches right here in the front it's set up like right here 
actually it looks kind of like this and the keys like right here but this one's like this now but the key will be in front um, you might get a lot of key breakage and uh, so it's good to keep those on hand these pot assemblies potentiometers usually you don't change out the whole enclosure it's like the value shopper you just change out the mechanism it's two Phillips screws down there take one out put another one in it's easy to keep this on the truck these go out all the time and a lot of time it's a wiring harness At this point in time I don't think we're going as far as doing the wiring harness because you got to feed it up all the way through the steering column which if you look right over here it goes in right there so you have to end up cutting your old wire taping onto that one and then feeding it all the way pulling it through fishing it through that's the easiest way I found to do that one um, I'm gonna grab my little testers for the motor you can make these yourself I don't know why I made mine this way back in the day but if you get yourself two uh, gator clips put on the ends of the wires and you can hook it onto your battery and then all you have to worry about is these two wires here so we're going to tip this card over get this battery out of here hopefully Take your motor leak motor off and that goes directly down it splits off one's one side's the brake one side's the motor leads and this is just the cover for the wire to protect it and this naturally goes all the way back to your pwm so this side here is your brake leads and this side your motor leads and that's what we want to hit Red on red, black on black. And as long as that motor moves, everything's good. plugged in. Now let's try it. I forgot I unplugged that 18 pin. That's my red. Here's my black. Oh. It's actually supposed to work. I don't know why it ain't working. That works. Oh, you know why? Because I'm going to the wrong fucking plug. Call me a dumbass. See, now the motor works. That's how you test the motor. It's getting lightheaded there. So, we know the motor works. works the PWM works uh, and as long as your charger and your plug-in and everything we did identical to the value shopper everything should be diagnosed but otherwise uh, easy shopper 7500 
and Easy Shopper 8000. Same scenario, all same plug and play stuff, just different area, looks different, but same general idea and process to test everything. Otherwise, that's your little tutorial. Any questions, just call.